how can China or any country in its cities adapt the forms of tall building design so it's not left with homogeneous skylines? I think what's important for the solution of this issue lies in the government planning or the urban planning. From the very beginning, the government should be very clear about the urban planning and what are the core areas and what are the supporting areas. For example, in the core areas, and the those uh, the skylines should be constructed. However, uh, uh, for the areas that are playing the supporting role, and the less skylines or the high rising buildings uh, should be constructed. So I think the government, starting from the very beginning, should have the clear plan for the urban planning and to have certain priorities regarding the uh, skyline constructions. And that we've, if we just blindly develop uh, the commercial areas, then without the integrated overall planning for the urban development, then we may run into some troubles in the future. What potential do you see for green walls or any other way of incorporating nature into high-rise buildings? Mm -hmm. I think we have to consider the harmony between, among, uh, between the construction or the skylines with the surrounding environment of the city. So I think in this sense, I'm talking about the visibility of the skylines. So for example, uh, we have to consider the construction of the skylines uh, in the context of the city landscape. And most of the super tall buildings are, have become the icon buildings in the city. So the visibilities are quite good. P people, upon the arrival, uh, the first site is the skylights uh, in the city. So in this sense, uh, at the different locations of the city, we have to consider the harmony of those super tall buildings uh, uh, compared with the surrounding environment. For example, uh, in Hong Kong, in Tokyo, in Dubai, because the environment uh, is quite different from city to city, so we have to uh, give the specific consideration to the uh, unique environment of the different cities, thus constructing the different types of different styles of the super tall buildings. So thus giving the people, thus rendering a kind of the pleasant feelings uh, for the people who can see the tall buildings. So we can't just talk about the construction of the super high building, super tall buildings without referring to the environment of the building. And also another issue is that we have to avoid the situation that is in the city, all the super tall buildings are all playing the supporting roles. And we should see some super tall buildings that are playing the major roles. But that is the most important thing. What are some features of vernacular architecture uh, in eastern China that you'd like to see incorporated in tall buildings that you haven't seen yet? Now, I think speaking of uh, the uh, function of the building, I, I mean, the currently, uh, we are focusing on the full life cycle concept. So we have to consider the full life cycle of the building. We can't just uh, uh, just, just consider one aspect of the super tall building. And uh, as we know, that a super tall building has many different functions. And sometimes and the super tall building is the multiple use building. For example, it has the office floor, and also it has the service floor, providing different services to the residents inside or uh, nearby. So in this sense, the super tall building should be intended to invigorate the urban life. And also, as we know, that for the super tall building, the energy consumption is huge. So in this sense, and we have to consider uh, the integration of the energy efficiency and the environmental friendly aspects, as well as the sustainable development. And also, on top of this, we have to consider the life cycle uh, of uh, the super tall building to combine those different factors to south achieving the best results. I think this is a challenge for all the professionals and the related counterparts. And also, I think regarding the visibility of the super tall building, this is another challenge our uh, architecture uh, professionals have to face. For example, we must have the super tall building that has the high quality and also it should be easy to use. Uh, apart from this, it should be in harmony with the regional of uh, uh, characteristics and also it should be in line with the cultural and also traditional uh, taste or quality of the local region. So we must have the excellent design and uh, for our professionals, for our architects, they should have the perspective a vision in the developing in the development of the super tall buildings. I think uh, the 
this time we discussed the concept of uh, the sustainable development of the super tall, super tall building. I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to further explore the future development, how to satisfy the future demand for the super tall building. So I think this uh, conference provided very good opportunities for us to further discuss the concept of a sustainable vertical city concept. And uh, I think the super tall building in the future should further satisfy the objective of a better city and a better life. It should be high effic highly efficient and also it should be environmental friendly. And uh, I think our further design should reflect this objective. What do you think the traditional, more horizontal Chinese city can teach the new vertical cities that we're trying to build today? Yes, we did learn the lesson from the horizontal uh, or the flat city, and we also applied some uh, unique features of the flat city uh, or the flat uh, construction to our vertical city concept. And for example, let's talk about the firstly, the advantage of the flat city or the flat construction or horizontal construction, if I may. So in this sense, as we know that uh, the compared with the High, the super tall building, the, of course, the efficiency of the flat uh, construction may not be that high, but it is environmental friendly. And also, uh, because the, for the residents living in the horizontal constructions, they're closer to the nature or to, to the environment. So in this sense, they have more opportunities to make a direct contact with the nature and uh, with uh, the surroundings. And also regarding the size of uh, the horizontal constructions, the size is quite appropriate uh, for the residents living inside. So in this sense, it's a kind of uh, the humanized uh, construction. And, uh, and also, as we know that for the horizontal constructions, uh, they are more diversified than the vertical constructions in a way. And uh, therefore, it is more convenient for the residents living inside or nearby to make use of the amenities or some facilities inside. And uh, uh, also for the uh, uh, horizontal constructions, it can uh, offer some kind of a historical memory for the residents living inside. And uh, so I think those are the advantages of uh, the horizontal uh, constructions. Uh, however, I think uh, we can apply this kind of uh, the features to our vertical constructions. For example, in the future, and uh, we can make the uh, super tall buildings more environmental friendly. And uh, also, and, uh, uh, in the past, we just have uh, some uh, very simple functions for the vertical constructions. But in the future, perhaps we can make our vertical constructions more diversified and uh, uh, so south reflecting different features uh, in the local regions. And uh, as we know that for the vertical construction, uh, nowadays we can also connect the different super tall buildings uh, around the middle level or the, at the very top, not just at, at the base. For example, in the past, because there are low connections in the middle or at the very top of the super tall building, so for the people, uh, for the people living inside, if they want to get from one building to another building, they have to go down to all the way to the bottom and uh, go to another uh, building. Now, because of this kind of connection, uh, they don't have to you know, go all the way down to the bottom. They can just directly flow to another floor, uh, so satisfying different requirements or functions. And uh, so in this way, I think we can provide more functions uh, to the uh, vertical constructions thanks to the features we learned from the horizontal constructions. So I think in the future, we have to uh, improve this kind of the features of the vertical constructions uh, to avoid the isolates uh, or the isolation effects of the super tall buildings. And uh, for example, in Singapore, I know there uh, are some uh, uh, typical cases of uh, the gardens on the roof. So I think this is the typical example, the vertical constructions learned from the horizontal uh, constructions. And uh, so I think there are some uh, uh, projects uh, currently under construction or already constructed in China. So where we see the connections uh, at the middle level of the super tall buildings, the south providing different functions. For example, ledger or the uh, some uh, health, uh, the uh, exercise providing some uh, amenities or facilities for people to exercise. I think those are wonderful improvement. So all in all, I think we have to provide different functions to the vertical constructions, and uh, uh, in this way we can make uh, individual super tall building unique and the uh, south to spur the excitement for the people who can make use of the super tall building.
I'd like to ask about the future of China's tall building boom. Do you think it will continue into second and third tier cities, or will we see something different than we've seen in recent years, where uh, tall buildings seem to be the the future? Now, I think uh, uh, for the uh, tier two, tier uh, three cities, and uh, we have to consider uh, that. Uh, I, I know that overall speaking, for the super tall building, or for, for the tall building construction, this is uh, the uh, funds intensive. So it requires lots of funds and uh, also the investment. And uh, I know that in some uh, tier two, tier three cities, urban, uh, the urbanization is going on. And, uh, the the density of uh, the population is becoming uh, higher, and also the value of the land is also increasing. So we have to consider uh, the, this kind of uh, issue. And, uh, uh, after this com uh, process is completed, I think uh, there could be some increasing demand for the tall building, but not necessarily the super tall building uh, in the tier two, tier three cities. So speaking of the construction of the tall building in the tier two, tier three cities, we have to consider the actual demand in the local region, whether or not there is uh, the true needs for the super tall building or the tall buildings in the tier two, tier three cities, thus making our construction plan in line with the local demand. And uh, I think, that, for example, let's look at the look back three to five years ago. People were blinded about the uh, super tall building. They just flooded into the construction of the super tall building. And now you can see that many construction projects are already completed. And uh, look at the ROI of a certain projects. The ROI of a certain projects are quite good, but uh, same does a lot apply to some other projects. So we have to consider the lesson we learned in the past. I know many construction projects are currently under construction, but in the future we have to consider the impact on the environment and sometimes the results may not be always satisfactory to the uh, developers. So we have to be rational about the construction plan of, of uh, the super tall, super tall building. We have to refer to the actual demand. I believe that uh, this kind of the need for the super tall building in the tier one city will uh, still exist, will continue to exist because uh, during some uh, uh, core areas of uh, the tier one cities, the demand uh, still exist. So I think the construction of the super tall building may continue in the future uh, there, uh, in some uh, core regions, core areas of the tier one cities. However, as far as the tier two, tier three cities are concerned, and uh, I think we have to consider carefully about the size of the tall, tall building and the actual demand for the tall building uh, in the tier two, tier three cities. To make the construction plan of the tall building in the tier two, tier three cities, uh, match the local demand and the local economic status.